We've made it to the end. We're now on the D of solid, the dependency inversion principle. I think this one, I put it sort of alongside single responsibility principle in that the wording uh, makes it more confusing than what it actually is or than what the problem solves. There's a few parts of the wording which sort of need to be translated, I think, in order for it to make sense. But we'll have a look at the wording now. And the main things when I say the wording are stuff like high level modules, low level modules, inversion. It all makes it all very sort of highbrow computer sciencey and more complex than what it actually is. So high level modules should not depend on low level modules. Both should depend on abstractions, for example, interfaces. So I think we understand abstractions and interfaces, but we're going to cover it uh, in this one anyway. And then it says that abstractions should not depend on details. Details should depend upon abstractions. Now, before we go any further, let's take care of that terminology there. So we've just mentioned high level modules and low level modules, and it's not really going to make much sense to go any further without really having a good grasp of what we're talking about there. So high level modules, think of these as your code or your classes which take care of the business logic, the core functionality. In our case, the example we're going to use is we're going to have an order processor for processing an order, like an e-commerce order or something like that. That is the functionality, that is the task that we're trying to achieve. So we can think of that as a high-level module. But in order to complete that full task of processing an order, there might be other things that needs to happen. We might need to email a um, customer, we might need to log something to a log, we might need to write data to the database. And so we can think of the components that handle those tasks that we are depending on as the low level modules. So in our case here, what we're gonna have is we're gonna have a logger component. That is our low level module, the one that takes care of the smaller um, bit tasks, which are part of the overall high level task. One way to think about it is the high level code is concerned with what gets done, whereas the low level code is concerned with how it gets done. Okay, so with that explanation out of the way, let's go on and have a look at what problem is solved by dependency inversion. So the dependency inversion principle addresses a problem of tightly coupled code, which often occurs when high level modules are directly dependent on low level modules. And this tight coupling leads to difficulty in modifying and also, well, let's complete that, changes in the low level module can affect the high level module and also challenges in testing where high level modules are harder to test in isolation because they are directly dependent on the details of low level modules. And you'll see an example of that when we actually uh, go on and run some tests which is related to our order processing now this is the order processor that I was talking about. It has one uh, private property, which is a logger. We have a constructor and you'll notice that in the constructor, I am instantiating an instance of file logger. And then that is what we are using to log something when an order is processed. So the problem we have here is the tight coupling. This order processor is directly dependent on the file logger simply because it's been instantiated inside of the class. So if we wanted to perform our logging in a different way with a database logger, I have a database logger here which behaves slightly different. If we wanted to log to a database instead, well, we're kind of stuck, aren't we? Because we've created this hard coding here and we've created this direct dependency. There's nothing loose about this design whatsoever. This order processor will only ever be able to log one way because it is dependent on a concrete implementation. Whereas if we look at the wording of dependency uh, inversion, high level modules should not depend on low level modules. Both should depend on abstractions. We're not depending on an abstraction. We are depending currently on a concrete implementation. And also when we run our tests, we cannot bypass this and it means that we're always gonna to write to a file when we run our tests. Let me give you a demonstration of that. So inside of tests, I've created this order processor test. As you can see here, uh, we instantiate an order processor, just creating some test data and then we're gonna process that order 
and just assert that the result is true. So uh, just a little bit of make-believe here. All we're doing here is taking the order data and I'm just setting a key on there, order processed to true, and that is what we're testing against. But the thing I'd like you to notice here is that when I run this, then this part here is going to happen. We are calling log and that is going to log something to a file called log.txt. So if I run vendor bin php unit tests, the test runs, everything passes. However, look what's appeared in my project here. I've now created this log.txt file and I shouldn't really have to go and create files every time I run the tests. I should be able to swap this for a double, but it's impossible to swap it for a double because I've instantiated it inside the class and created that concrete dependency. And this is just one example of where it becomes complicated in test. But can you imagine if we were connecting with a third party service over the web or if we're writing to a database or retrieving data from somewhere else, writing data to somewhere else. It means you will be dependent on all that technology working on having those connections just to run a test simply because you created a concrete dependency. Whereas now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch this out for an abstraction. And that means I'll be able to provide a double for the logger. And by doing that, it means we won't actually uh, get the logger to do anything because it will just be stubbed. And what will happen is we'll just test the functionality that we want to test, that the order is being processed and that we're getting the correct result back without actually having to touch that dependency. Okay, so I'm going to go and delete that log.txt file and I'm going to switch to the branch with a solution on it. Okay, and this is the change I have made. So, high-level modules should not depend on low-level modules. They should depend on abstractions. And this is what I've created here. By injecting a logger interface, it means we have a much more flexible design. We're not dependent on a concrete implementation. And anything which implements logger interface can actually be used in our order processor. And so if we look at our options here, I have a file logger, which implements a logger interface, and this logs to a file. I also have a database logger, which implements logger interface, and instead this writes to a database. And so this is a much more flexible solution. If we return to our order processor test now, you'll see because we made that change where we are now injecting a logger interface, we are injecting the dependency and that dependency is an abstraction. What we can do is we can create a mock of that abstraction. So the logger interface is now being mocked. And that also means that we're not really going to be calling a log method on our logger when we run this test. Because we are using that mock, all we need to do is just set an expectation that the log method is being called the correct number of times and that it is being called with the correct data. But we're not touching the insides of any log method because the logger interface doesn't have any detail in the, a log method. It just provides the API for us, just the interface. So we're avoiding the problem of this being harder to test in isolation because we're no longer dependent on the details of the low level module. Let's actually run this. So vendor bin PHP unit, we'll run that. The test passed, the passed last time, so there's no change there. There is one extra assertion and that is because here we are checking that the method is being called and with the correct detail. If we go and look at the project files, you'll see nowhere here has a log.txt method being called. So we're completely avoiding doing any unnecessary low level stuff during our testing. And by the way, if you want to learn more about testing and how to test any kind of code, just check out my PHP testing bundle. It contains everything you'll ever need to know. So just going back to the wording, high level modules should not depend on low level modules. Both should depend on abstractions. So our order processor is dependent upon an abstraction and that is a logger interface which is being injected. But also the actual low level modules are dependent on the logger interface. If we look at our file logger, that implements logger interface. If we look at our database logger, that implements logger interface. So both the high level and low level modules are dependent on that logger interface. What else? Abstractions should not depend on details. 
details should depend on abstractions and so that's sort of what we've just covered there the concrete implementations are dependent upon that abstraction that logger interface so did we solve the problem that we set out to solve the dependency inversion principle addresses a problem of tightly coupled code which often occurs when high level modules are directly dependent on low level modules so when we were instantiating that file logger inside of the constructor here we were directly dependent upon that low level module but now we are no longer directly dependent on any low level module we are just dependent on that abstraction and so that tight coupling leads to difficulty in modifying changes in low level code can affect the high level module and also the challenges in testing high level modules are harder to test in isolation because they are directly dependent on the details of low level modules and we sidestepped that problem by actually being able to mock the logger interface which we were only able to do because it was being injected through the constructor and so that's the dependency inversion principle once again the code will be pushed to github where you can look at the start of the principle and also the solution i created two branches for each and the things to understand really are uh, get a good understanding of what low level modules are what high level modules are and what is being inverted that's always another part of the wording which used to confuse me basically what we're doing is we're changing the dependency we're shifting the dependency to an abstraction rather than a concrete implementation so sometimes i think rather than refer to it as something being inverted which can kind of confuse my mind is we're just shifting the dependency to something else and so that brings us to the end. I hope you've got value from the things that I've shown you over these previous five recordings. It's actually been a lot of fun for me to do like the discovery, look at alternative wordings for these principles, to come up with solutions, to come up with preventions, and to also explore the problem that these principles intend to prevent and solve. And so if you want any of the material, uh, the GitHub links or any of the courses which sort of include stuff like object-oriented programming, design patterns, I'll leave all those links under the video. Thanks for watching and until next time, have a good one.